which is a tool that is used to monitor students while they are working online. Um, maybe they're doing research, maybe they're completing an assignment on Google Classroom, something like that. And this is a way for teachers to track student behaviors in real time. So all computers are connected. The instructor gets an interface that shows them what all students are looking at. You can send messages to all students at once, or you can send private messages to students. So you can quietly alert a student that you know they're on a site they're not supposed to be on. You can close that for them and then warn them all without any interrupting anybody or any students knowing that you've made that intervention. So it's a way to ensure that students stay on task and that they're not doing things they're not supposed to do, which is great. Um, that's the main thing that you can do with this, but I think that there are other purposes as well. And so you can actually, this is their website here, and you can they have a blog you can check out. There's video training, a help center. Um, they've got webinars and live streams. Like they really want people, um, they've even got distance learning resources, self-harm and suicide prevention, which is surprising. And then also efficacy section and a glossary, glossary of technical terms that they use. These are things that they are focused on. So they have a unified learning system for students, uh, safety and security measures, classroom management um, tools, and then instruction and assessment tools. So it looks like they can identify learning gaps and accelerate academic progress. These are things that I've never used used this resource for, but what I have used it I, um, for is to monitor student progress and it does a great job of that. And it looks like it also displays, you know, how many students are online here. This is kind of, um, this is the kind of program that when you don't have it, you really notice the problems with students staying on task and engaged. Look It, which is a resource I've used quite a bit, and it works great for mostly elementary school kids, but you could potentially use it for high school or college even uh, for activities and things like that. So it's basically a game-based software, and you can plug in any uh, set of problems or uh, questions that you want. So, um, and I guess it's pronounced Blue Kit, but I always call it Blue Kit, so I guess I've been wrong this whole time. Anyway, you'll sign up here, and once you've signed up, um, anybody can sign up, by the way, uh, as an instructor, which is kind of nice. And you'll create a set of problems if you want to include your own questions. But I've noticed it's really lengthy to do this. Or you can go to Discover Sets. So you can go to Discover here. And then there's all this stuff here you can choose from. And I personally like to use, um, I like to use, like, let's say right now I'm actually working on figurative language. So I can type in that. And then I could type in like my grade level and then I'll get look at fifth grade figurative language 35 questions or 50 questions but you should always go in and like make sure the questions are covering the things that you're covering then um, you can show the answers here and it'll show you what it looks like to them they have this interface this is what they see when um, they, they see the question this will fill up their whole screen and I like the ones that have cute pictures with it and stuff. So they're in a battle uh, with other students and you can use this um, to play a game, right? And I'm not sure what Plus has to offer because I've only used the free version, but um, this is a cool, awesome thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose host. Then it's going to display different game modes that you can go into. And my kids really love the crypto hack the best. You literally hack other students uh, and take away their money and stuff. So they're earning like money and crypt I guess crypto, which is a type of uh, currency. And um, yeah, so you go to host now. You can add like a time limit. So it's seven minutes. That's probably long enough, but you can adjust it. And you can end the game after a certain meet certain person reaches a certain amount of time or you can do a timing and you can assign names to them by choosing random names or you can allow them to select their names they really love choosing names so i let them do that so i'm going to click host now now it's going to go ahead and give you a code up here students will log in to book it as students and they don't have to have like an email or anything associated with this they can just play it without having to sign up or anything so they can just join the game by putting in this code 
So it's pretty cool. And then um, you basically will see the gameplay here, which I can't simulate, you know, just by myself. But um, I highly recommend that you check it out. They also have this if you have people playing on their phones, like if you're teaching a high school or college class where they're allowed to have their phones as a resource or use iPads or something. So anyway, uh, you can also do a join link and then send it out to Google Classroom or whatever. So that is Look It. And honestly, it's a pretty cool resource. I've used it as a college instructor and I have not used it with elementary school students, but it would work with them as well as long as everybody has like a Google Classroom or something or a Google email address that they can use to sign up. Um, if you go here to sign up, it's really easy if you already have like a Google profile or a Microsoft profile because you can just click sign in with that and then it signs you in and signs you up. So I'll go to login because I already have a login. And then it's gonna look like this. So I have um, changed my, when you first get in, you can choose the background picture and you can actually um, have all different kinds of topics. So here's like an example of something you could create. And um, I could record like a little something, something about my office hour. So as an instructor, this is really helpful. It could be a good interface for you with students. Um, over here, I'm clicking on my class again and I can add a topic. So I could add a question or idea here. So I could say, introduce yourself using a one minute video. And so um, I could give a description here and then I could say, okay, one minute is the maximum recording time. And then I can choose my media so they can import images. Um, I could upload an image here. I could add a photo, anything I want to like make this cool. And then I post the topic. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and post that. And so now students can, um, you can copy this and paste it to like whatever interface you use for your students and then they'll click on it and it will take them here. They can use their Google to sign in and then they can start using the resource. So what it looks like when students are using the resource, um, this is giving me like prompting me with um, instructions on how to do things, which is great, it's a great feature. Um, so it's gonna look something like this. Um, I, this is just an image I pulled from YouTube, but basically like when people are using Flipgrid um, at once, they each record their own video and response or they can record um, a, like a typed response. So there's multiple ways that you can use this or they can just do an audio response. And then when you um, go in to answer, like respond to it, you can respond with videos as well, which is cool because a lot of interfaces don't allow you to respond with videos. You have to respond with text, but you can respond with an audio, um, a video or a text. And so it gives students options, which helps differentiate instruction. So it's kind of cool. I am as um, an online instructor, it's a great interface to share visual work. Like, so if they do, if they're doing art or sharing some type of photo, I use this for something um, where I have the students create a light bright image using a game online that they play light bright. Um, so in that, in the, I think it's a, a kind of an introduction sort of activity in the class, like one of the first things they do, um, and it is to help them follow instructions. I won't go too into it, but. Let me show you how this works. So you'll see this interface when you first get to Padlet, you'll log in. Um, they used to have an app, but I've noticed the app doesn't really work on, I, I use an iPhone and it doesn't work on my iPhone, but maybe it works on um, like other types of phones. So anyway, this is what my Padlet looks like. And right now I have one Padlet that's I've opened recently, but I also have some other ones. I use this for two different assignments. And so these are all the um, Padlets I've used in the past, but this is the one that I use most often. And uh, this is current, like this semester, what uh, students have made. These are examples of what, so they can post like a picture on here. I've got instructions up here of exactly what they need to do. All they gotta do is press on this plus sign to add, and they can add using these icons here. So this is links, photos, or videos, maybe this is photos, and maybe files. And there's more options, like you can actually draw stuff in here. There's a lot of cool things you could do with this, and you can like go searching for, um, I guess, these on, um, you could go look and, and pull one and stick it in there. So it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how to close this, but anyways, um, this is amazing. And I just think that a lot of instructors could use this. It integrates with Google Classroom by a link. So there, there's a link for this um, 
Padlet that I can use and post and all I have to do is go up here and just grab it from here or I could probably grab it from here as well. So um, user settings, here we have like all my information. So my dashboard is here. This actually shows me like my, uh, my library, which is here. And I really like um, Padlet because it's just a fun, different way for students to um, engage with the class. Um, and share something interesting. And so you can actually uh, format this many different ways. And I really like that. Um, I don't remember what I even did with this one, but oh yeah, students did blocks activity at one point. So I have them play games usually and then post the results of the games um, here. And the game is always designed to teach them something. So um, this is a, a something that I'm very familiar with. This is where they actually take a learning styles assessment and they post their answers. So this one's like auditory verbal learner. I'm a um, visual nonverbal learner. And then they post answers to questions here that I ask them here. And then also in Canvas, which is their interface. So love this one, use it, love it. Document signing application in which you can legally sign anything so i could take a contract from anything and just upload it here and like sign it digitally or i could actually add signers onto it and have people sign my documents so this is an important skill for students to learn so if you're teaching high school this is essentially awesome um, and i teach college and i teach um, classes that are geared towards like them working on college applications or on applying for jobs, creating resumes, things like that. So this fits right in with that. Um, how you use it. So this is the screen you'll see. And to be honest with you, if you try to, um, you could do this try for free thing and it, you, you can use it for a while for free. Um, but you can use it for free just to sign things. But as long as you don't add other signers, it'll be free, okay? So this is kind of how it works. So when you log in, and by the way, creating an account and logging in is kind of a lengthy process because this is a legal signature, so they have to literally make sure it's you first. Then you're able to create a signature. So you'll go here, click on that where it says create signature, and you can choose your signature type, and then you'll just press um, create to get your signature. I already have mine and my initials. And so um, to do this, uh, you actually go to um, start here, and then you can actually drag and drop um, or you can upload. So I'm gonna upload from my desktop. I have this sample already ready to go. This is from an assignment from one of my classes where they have to sign a contract with me. Um, they have a link to the assignment and then they have samples. So there's two ways they can turn it in, differentiated learning, right? So they can either like print it, sign it, and then scan it or take a photo of it, or they can use DocuSign and I have this, uh, you know, you can challenge yourself by learning how to do a digital signature thing. So you basically um, copy and paste this portion of the contract, and here's my rubric. But anyway, that link will lead you to this situation um, where you are able to, so I've uploaded this assignment. So now what I'm going to do, actually I wanna, hold on, I don't wanna do that. So I've got my document here that I just uploaded and I have my signature chosen. So down here, I select what kind of contract it is. I'm just gonna choose other and um, the envelope type. I'm just going to put um, sample because this is a sample. Okay, so I'm gonna add recipients here and I'm gonna write, I am the only signer and I don't need to add a message or anything else. And then I click sign. And then I click sign. Okay, there we go. And um, yeah, we can allow my location. So I will put in my name here. So I'm gonna do name and put it here. Okay, and I wanna make it like bigger. I can do that, I think. Yeah, I think I can. I think you can. Maybe I have to wait. But um, then I can do my signature and I can make that bigger for sure. I don't know why I'm not able to make this bigger or smaller. That's weird. Let me try again. I want to cover the neck, most of the text there. Okay, and then I can add the date here. So date, and I put it here. Okay, so now I'm good. And um, I do have to add a comment or question on her here so I can add text and add a question or say whatever I need to say. And so I'm just going to be like, And then finish, bam. 
So you can share your document here, but you can also click no thanks, which I tell people to do. And then we can go to where it says other actions and download that. So here it is and it says download. So I can click on download. I just click all, combine into single PDF file and download. Now I have a copy of my signed document. This kind of came out wonky. So I need to remember to change that for the next time I do this. But that's how you use DocuSign and you can use this for any legal signature. And you know, there's free video editing software on every Mac. And there used to be free editing software on um, PC as well. It was Windows Movie Maker, but then they made it not free for a while. And this is an assignment I used to do. It's been like maybe five years since I've done it, but WeVideo turned out to be a really easy interface for students who have never made a artistic type of video. So if you want students to learn video editing while also completing a project on another topic, this is a great tool. And you can also offer for students to use whatever video editing software they wanna use. But then this is pretty easy for instructors to use. The other thing about this that I really like is that instructors can use this to deliver video lectures and you can com complete videos like and upload them to YouTube. Um, or you can just create videos and put them into whatever program you want. So you don't necessarily have to use YouTube. This is sort of a like bridge the gap and you can actually edit the videos. So um, I may actually use WeVideo to edit this um, today if I don't use my normal software that I use, um, which is um, the Apple software. So anyway, this is the assignment that I used to do with this, which is a mission statement video. So this is an example of like one of the mission statement videos that- The idea of having oh, for God's one sakes, stream of income just didn't sit well with me. Okay, so here's an example of part of the video that they made about themselves and their mission in life. So um, anyway, I judged a contest with this every year and I had them do we video. I went ahead and logged in. This is just a dummy account because I have a lot of videos that I've made and I don't want to confuse people, but you can actually create a project here by clicking create, but this is a template. And so it kind of shows you how we video works. It's like a um, tutorial in a way. So they have a video already set up for you and they show you like, here's the audio. So I can audio dub anything I could add music in the background or I could add my voice over it. Um, you can rearrange these, so like switch them into whatever order and you basically create clips. You can um, change the length of clips just by doing this and that. You can add transitions um, it, by clicking here and just kind of throwing it in there. And so you'll see now there's a transition. There. Okay, so anyway, um, when you're done, you just click export and you can export it um, to Oh, you're using premium content, but I mean, if you're using the basic version, this doesn't happen. It's because like you're just using basic stuff and it tells you the difference between what and what. You can get the paid version. You can absolutely create a video um, without the paid version. It does leave a watermark, but it's on the bottom. So it's not like through the entire screen. So it's not disruptive to the video and you can actually use it for that purpose. There's a lot of other video editors out there, but this is one that I found really helpful and useful. And I wanted to share that. using this with my fifth grade students and I got to be honest with you there are issues with it that I don't like but there are things that are really amazing and so um, unfortunately one of the things that I don't like about this software is that it doesn't work on the browsers that I have on the current computer I'm using so on my work computer um, I have Safari and I have Chrome so I can use this but on my home computer I actually deleted those because I noticed I was getting a little malware when I was using those um, those browsers. And so I only have Firefox and Opera on this one. So I actually can't use this fully on my home computer because I don't have those, um, those uh, operating systems. But to begin, you wanna make sure you use the login for teachers, not for students. Because if you do the one for students, you mess up and it's kind of a pain in the butt to fix that, which is totally what I did. So you'll create a free account here and um, you'll choose, so this is saying like your browser's unsupported, which is fine. So anyway, um, it does give you um, some, I, I think uh, maybe we can go to like learn more here and you can kind of see what things look like. So you can try but create it for free. You don't get all of the things, but it's basically, you know, for every age level, which is really cool. So you can incorporate this into lessons and have them create book pages. Um, you can have them create books on anything. So they learn through this how to create digital art 
and basically how to do like publishing. So it's like publishing a magazine or creating a graphic novel. It gives you like different choices of um, different types of things you can create. And so these are examples of things that you could create. And so they've got haiku poetry, um, creating journals. And so like there's tutorials for how to do all this stuff. And you can just read these like books on how to do it. And here's the example of kind of what a book you could create here. Um, and the kids can each create a page and then you can like combine the books together. You can have up to 40 books at a time. So as long as you, like if you have one library, every student can join that library. Um, you can post a code or you can invite them to the library. So it's kind of cool. And though I've used this on other um, browsers and I have it on my work computer, on my home computer, I can't use it. So it, I don't like that it's only available on certain browsers, but maybe they'll branch out in years to come. Um, if you are teaching a class um, of students, I would say anywhere um, above kindergarten, so like first grade and up, this is a great tool. I think like kindergarten, it might be a little crazy for them. Um, but I think first graders, especially towards the end of the year, could utilize this. You can set it to a certain grade level and have the tools only appropriate for that grade level, which is a nice feature and it's free. So there is a free version of this. Of course, um, schools can purchase this like to use for everybody and or purchase the full features. And I'm assuming there's just a lot more editing features for students to use. So I strongly recommend this one.